Hi, I'm Mike, this is Project Archangel, and today I'm going to talk to you about breathing. It's one of the basic things that we do every day, all day, but most people will be doing it wrong. How you can improve that? Stay tuned till the end. All right, first we gotta talk about how does breathing actually work? Uh, the physiology of breathing and a bit of anatomy. So <clears throat> breathing works uh, through the diaphragm. The diaphragm is the dome shaped muscle, it sits roughly here, has kind of this shape sort of right underneath your rib cage. Now this muscle on inspiration is going to contract and pull down. By pulling down it's going to push the intestines out of the way a little bit and uh, create a negative pressure inside the chest cavity. Because the lungs are attached to the chest cavity, there will also be negative pressure created inside the lungs, which means air is going to get sucked through the windpipe, nose, mouth, windpipe, into the lungs, and there the oxygen exchange with the carbon dioxide happens. This is basically how the inspiration works. On expiration, the uh, diaphragm basically just releases, goes back up, and the positive pressure that's created through that in the chest will expel the air. First, let's talk about the optimum way of breathing during most of the day. That is abdominal breathing. It's also called Buddha breath. Why is it called Buddha breath? Well, we see that when I'm turning sideways to show you. Abdominal breathing works like this. On inspiration, the diaphragm pulls down, as I told you, and the more space you can make in your abdominal area, the lower the diaphragm can pull and the more air can get sucked into your lungs, which obviously is a good thing. So in order to facilitate that, you need to relax your core muscles. So not just the front, but basically all the muscles that are tightening up your midsection. Okay, because the more tension you have here, the harder the diaphragm has to work in order to push the abdominal contents, organs, you know, intestines, all that good stuff down in order to make more space for the lungs to expand. So if you just look at my, my abs right now, so they are relaxed. If I breathe in and out, you can see that my shoulders are not moving. If I turn to the side, you can see the Buddha belly coming out. This is the easiest way to breathe. It's the more effect, most effective and efficient way. Now you can even um, make it more effective by actively contracting your abs on the exhale. So you breathe in and then you suck your belly button in. So you can see that increases the total volume that's being shifted back and forth, which means it increases the total volume on each breath that you can, um, the total volume of air that's inhaled. Well, Mike, if belly breathing is so natural and so easy, why are we talking about anything else? Or about belly breathing in the first place, if that is like how we all breathe anyway. Yeah, that's how you should breathe. And that's how you were born. The problem nowadays is um, there's different problems. One is postural. So we usually have been spending years and years and years in shitty postures, sitting bent over in the laptop, sitting like this in the car, sitting like this on the couch, okay? Which means everything is kind of like shifted into, into um, a position where it's not supposed to be, okay? So the body adapts 
obviously very good so he starts to breathe where he can like and if there's no space here because you're compressing everything down there it's going to start use accessory muscles and start chest breathing okay so a lot of people now are habitual chest breathers which looks like this now if you look at my abs compared to my shoulders The abs hardly, hardly move. But the shoulders move a lot. Okay? Now there's two problems. There's multiple problems with that. Problem number one. The volume is far less on chest breathing than it is on belly breathing. That's point one. Point two. The accessory muscles, so the intercostals and the traps and so on, were not built to do that kind of work for a long time. So eventually they'll fatigue, and that means that your inspirational value, so the amount of air that you're breathing in, will get less and less during the day, which means you will have to breathe faster, which then increase, uh, increases some other stuff, and this is the third point. Chest breathing is associated with um, uh, the, the sympathetic system, so adrenaline release and uh, stress hormone release, okay? Uh, whereas the belly breathing is associated with parasympathetic activation, which again is the opposite. So less stress hormones, more relaxation, okay? Lower heart rate compared to higher heart rate, higher blood pressure with the chest breathing. And the body also um, um, has feedback systems. So that what I'm trying to say is that the more you use chest breathing, the more your adrenaline system is going to activate the activated adrenaline system in turn is going to increase the chest breathing. So you're going into like a vicious circle and um, that's maybe one reason why you feel exhausted at the end of the day. I mean, amongst all the other reasons, okay? It's, it's definitely not helping, that's what I'm trying to say. So belly breathing is the best way to go through your day, but we're talking about it because our natural uh, habitat these days is not the natural habitat that our system was built for. At least we're not treating it that way. So we may have fucked up our natural systems to a point where we have to relearn first what is actually natural and best for us. And belly breathing is one thing you should definitely relearn and practice because one thing you'll do all day long for 24 hours every day is breathing. And if your breathing is screwed up, you're doing a lot of volume with the screwed up stuff. Now that you understood how breathing works and why you should be belly breathing, I'm going to give you one exercise, a very simple one that you need to start with. The exercise I want you to start with is focused breathing. We're going to focus on inhalation and exhalation, okay? To make sure that it's actually belly breathing that we're doing. So what I want you to do is, on the inhale, feel how the diaphragm moves down and then check your chest and your abs and make sure you relax your belly. Feel your belly getting pushed out by the diaphragm. And then exhale and slightly uh, support the exhalation with a little bit of muscle contraction. So try to pull your belly button just slightly inside before you relax again. Don't hold your breath after the inhale or the exhale. The hardest thing is going to be that after the exhale, you have some tension here. I want you to work on just releasing the tension. By just releasing the tension, your intestines are going to basically get more space and they're going to draw the diaphragm with them, metaphorically speaking, okay? So you will see this, is, this requires no effort at all. It's just like you have pressure, you release the pressure. Okay, that way you 
can get an understanding for how this is supposed to feel. Now we're exaggerating it a little bit. During your normal day-to-day -day life, you're not going to feel it like this. You're actually not going to feel it at all. But as with all um, technique training, you have to sort of over exaggerate the movements at first a little bit before you go into fine motor details. Okay, so you have to relearn the gross motor movements basically so you get them into the right order and use all the parts that you're supposed to use and don't worry too much about is this is this like how it would be for real okay it's not we're going to fine-tune that but in the beginning breathe in relax your belly and then breathe out let go pull it back in let go pull it back in let go okay very simple so here's the last few things to focus on what i want you to do is on inhalation i absolutely want you to inhale through the nose okay exhalation i want you to exhale through the mouth Right? Why? I'm going to talk about that in another video, but there is a specific reason for it. I just don't want this to get too long, so I'll talk to you about that in the next one. So thanks for watching all the way to the end. I hope you got something out of it. Um, let me know if you're a chest breather, a belly breather down in the comments and if that breathing training actually worked for you and helped you. If you have any questions, comments, email, um, sign up to the channel, share the shit, you know, all the stuff. Give me a like. Yay! See you next time.